Hi, this is Rhett with TestingTheory.com, and today we're going to talk about rapid iteration the right way because there is a wrong way to do it. In fact, I just saw that wrong way with a client that I've worked with. And I also want to give you four things that you can do now to rapidly iterate the right way. I recently just worked with a client who wanted to do rapid iteration. The challenge is this person came from a design background and they thought the best way to rapidly iterate is to get design in front of someone, ask them questions about the design, redesign it, ask them more questions, and rapidly iterate in front of a person. Now maybe if your site is really bad and you've never done any testing and you've never built or analyzed it or had any metrics on it, maybe the solution could work for you. Like if you're starting from scratch and have nothing, you might say, hey, let's get some people in the room and we'll just build something. That might be a solution, but for the majority of sites out there that already have a foundation of analytics and qualitative and quantitative data, to do rapid iteration in this way is really dangerous because it takes what may be already working and you iterate out of that with a few people. The challenge is you're likely iterating yourself out of the best solution. Whenever you have a small sample size of a usability study or this design rapid iteration scenario, you get easily swayed by a few voices. If the feedback comes back that one or two people didn't like this element or didn't like this part of the page, that could then be designed differently. But again, that's such a small sample size and a strong opinion or any kind of moderator bias can really heavily influence that way people think and feel and react to what they're seeing. There have been so many studies on moderator influence and moderator bias, we can't even go into it, but it's a real thing. And so when you're moderating a design for a few people and they're giving you feedback in real time and you're changing that design in real time, again, there's so many flaws with this, but the challenge is, is you have, you have bias data, you have a few opinions that could sway the outcome. And again, the challenge that you're, you may have a good solution and you iterate out of that because of a few opinions. So why do people do this? Why do they get designs in front of people and think they're rapidly iterating? It's because it feels good. They feel like they're making progress. They feel like they're getting the actual users to tell them something. That feeling of doing something quickly, of moving forward, even if it's not the right way or the right direction, helps people feel good. If you're neglecting the actual impact on the business by looking at your visitor population and having a large enough sample size, you can make some drastically big mistakes by iterating rapidly in the wrong direction. Before we talk about the details of the four things you can do to rapidly iterate, the first thing you need to understand, the good iteration and rapid iteration has to happen within a testing team. And there's so many reasons why testing is so valuable. First, you get large sample sizes of your actual visitor population. The large sample size is what allows you to avoid those extremes in behavior. When you have one or two people in front of you, if they have very strong opinions one way or the other, those strong opinions can sway you. But when you have a large sample size and you're getting data from lots of different people, those, those outliers become silenced as you see the bell curve and you see the normal distribution and the range of what people actually, what matters to those people. The other thing that's important about testing data is that it's causal data. When you make a change, you've caused or influenced something, something to happen. Whereas when you're just in front of someone and showing them a design, there's no change. They're reacting to that design. It's the comparison of the causal data that's important. When the visitors don't know they're in a test, they react to the experience and then that reaction is unbiased, which allows you to compare the variations in an unbiased way to say, when they didn't know they were in a test and they weren't biased, how did they react? What was their natural behavior and what metrics can help us understand that? So again, testing is so important because you eliminate the bias, you have a large sample size and you're getting causal data. So let's talk about four things you can do as part of your testing team to rapidly iterate better. The first and foremost thing you need to do to rapidly iterate is to create a cross-functional testing team. I have a whole video on this, so I won't go into the details, but you need a strategist, you need a developer, you need an executive sponsor, you need designers, you need QA, you need project management. You need all the rules represented from a good cross-functional team to be able to go quickly and to rapidly iterate. If you don't have a team member represented, it's more likely you're going to go slow and it's more likely you're not gonna get that rapid iteration that most companies want. The second thing you can do to better rapidly iterate is to create an environment that doesn't have the political or the red tape drama that slows companies down when they're doing their testing. When you create a culture of optimization that isn't influenced by the other politics or other constraints, then you're able to rapidly iterate. The third thing that you can do to rapidly iterate is to create a strong pipeline. When you have lots of tests flowing to the pipeline, you're able to go faster because those tests build on each other. To create a strong pipeline, you usually have to have a good culture of optimization where people are contributing ideas and you have a strong team around that. 
And so creating a good pipeline allows you to go faster because you're getting efficiencies as you do more tests. The fourth tip that I have for you in order to be able to rapidly iterate is to create a testing process that serves you. A good process will help you go faster. A good process is something you're not a slave to, it's your servant. It's helping you go faster, it's helping you create more, it's helping you do good things. If you don't have a testing process, you're missing out. You're not going as fast as you could. So those are your four tips to be able to go faster and rapidly iterate the right way using causal data that is testing data. First, create a cross-functional testing team. Second, make sure that your environment isn't constrained by politics and red tape. Third, make sure you have a very strong testing pipeline so you can gain those efficiencies as you do more testing. And fourth, make the process serve you. Don't have a process that makes you a slave, that slows you down, but make the process be your ally by having a very efficient testing process. Thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, like the video. Also, if you're interested in getting some free consulting, go to testingtheory.com where you can sign up for a free group consulting session. In those sessions, we talk about things just like this. What are the principles of good testing? How does it apply in the context of your business? And how should we be doing the type, this type of testing to get more value for our businesses and the customers we work with? So again, go to testingtheory.com where you can sign up for a session of free group consulting.